Hi, um, my name is Liz Wormsley. I am the head of marketing at Fluid Commerce. We are a e-commerce agency just a few miles up north in Manchester. And today I'm going to be talking with my experts about Hoover, all things Hoover and how you can use it to turbocharge your Magento or Adobe Commerce store. So I will let the guys introduce themselves. Rob, do you want to go first? Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Rob. Um, I'm the e-commerce account director for Fluid. Um, my job involves looking after our clients. Um, we, um, my, my role really is to provide consultancy um, to our clients, and obviously what we try and do through that is grow through development. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the, the top sort of the top level. Just out of curiosity, how many people here use uh, Magento, Adobe Commerce? A few show of hands, that's always good. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Hi everyone, I'm John. Uh, I'm the VP of Enterprise Solutions at Hoover. Um, I've been there only a, a short while now, uh, but I am overseeing our rollout of all Adobe Commerce features for our platform, for our storefront. Uh, prior to that, uh, I spent 10 years at uh, a Magento agency as the technical director, overseeing implementations and the development team, so I've got a fair bit of experience on the, on the Magento side of things. So, we're talking about Hoover. Um, a few people in the room raised their hands to say that they were Magento at Derby Commerce, but although there's been quite a bit of noise and a bit of buzz and chatter about Hoover in the past two to three years, probably not everybody knows exactly what it is. So, John, do you want to just give a quick overview of what it is and how it came into being? Sure, yeah. So it's, a, it's an alternative storefront, a front end for Magento, uh, open source or Adobe Commerce. Uh, and it came about really uh, kind of two reasons. Firstly, the, the default Magento front end, uh, often referred to as Luma, uh, essentially used to have got a reputation for being a bit slow, a bit bloated, a bit cumbersome, and generally probably uh, in kind of more modern times, especially with a focus on mobile, not really fit for, for purpose for most cases. Uh, and secondly, um, the other kind of trend within the industry was towards uh, headless and PWA, but we kind of believe that that's not a, the right fit for the majority of merchants and actually a more traditional uh, front end is still uh, just as good in terms of performance, if not better, uh, and a lot, lot more cost effective. Thanks, John. Um, Rob, Fluid's had a bit of a relationship with Hoover and PWA, which John just mentioned. Do you want to just yep. sort of say how we ended up becoming a, a Hoover partner? Yeah, so um, around two years ago, we started looking at Hoover. Um, we actually made, in my eyes, and probably in the agency's eyes now, a little bit of a mistake because we, what we decided to do was go down and follow the Adobe um, PWA venue route. Now, Adobe PWA venue is actually quite, quite good. It's headless technology, but it can be, it can be quite expensive, um, as with a lot of headless technologies. Um, it can be expensive for an agency to build. It can also be expensive for merchants as well. And, what we actually found um, just through feedback from our clients, et cetera, is we got that feedback. So we sort of turned and looked at Hoover, uh, and what we, what we found was the community around Hoover and the sort of the rapid development of what we, we could see um, happening with Hoover was just, it was, it, you know, if, one, if one, one, was going, one was going one way and one was going the other, we've seen Hoover really sort of ramping up, whereas... Adobe PWA Venue and obviously Adobe Magento Luma, very, very static. Um, so over the last year, we've really put in a lot of groundwork to A, help the Hoover community, and it is a big, wide community. I mean, I'm on the Slack channels. I see John talking on Slack channels. The, you know, the founders talking on Slack channels, and everything around it is just all driven around community. Um, so yeah, we, we took a big step into this and we put essentially a lot of our, a, a lot of work and a lot of time in and to really help the, the platform and the theme, et cetera. So yeah, it's been, it's been quite good actually. And we're starting to see a lot of movement in the market now where people are wanting to move and wanting to get away from the original Luma theme um, is, the, is the answer. So we kind of know why not Luma or Venia but why, why Hoover? Like, what are the benefits for customers as well as site owners and business owners? Let's let's get stuck in. Like, do you want to? Yeah, sure. I mean, the first one and uh, kind of the, the main uh, focal point, um, especially when we, we began, is, is performance and speed. So, um, speed is is 
always important, becoming more and more important all the time. Uh, we've got things like Core Web Vitals now from Google, uh, where you, you, you'll rank higher um, the, if, you, if you pass those tests. Um, and just generally, as has been the case for many years in many studies, the, the faster your site, the higher your conversion. So yeah, the, Hoover has been built around kind of a, a lean, slim uh, base to work with that's highly performant. So that's the kind of the, the first key, okay. key area. And what is it that makes it so lean and slim, like on a Dell element side of things? Um, honestly, just le less code and simplicity. <laughs> there's, there's no kind of, uh, it's not any kind of like special voodoo magic. There is generally just a lot less code. There's, um, the standard Magento front end comes with megabytes and megabytes of, of libraries and JavaScript, whereas uh, our, our front end uh, ships with a handful of files that get output in the browser. It's, it's just, yeah, it's just lightning fast because there's less there. And obviously, everything's optimized um, as well. Yeah. And what would you say, Rob, is like the main benefits of Hoover for, let's say, the site owners and administrators? So I've, I'm actually from uh, merchant side originally. Um, I was a merchant side probably around 18 years. So I've done lots of builds with various um, e-commerce platforms. And one of those has always been you have a budget, as, as you all know, is, is you have to manage your budgets around builds. The good thing about Hoover is what we're seeing, and I'm seeing now from an agency side, is, as an example, something being created, uh, like technology or changes around the basket area, something that would typically take, don't all, all quote me on this, by the way, something that would typically take around eight or nine hours using standard Magento theme, uh, which is Luba theme, we're typically seeing this around five hours. So it's really hard. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, we're actually seeing a lot of a lot of time being completely taken out. So therefore, it's a massive cost saving to the merchant. It's a big cost saving to obviously us as a business as well. Then creating um, allows us to do more builds throughout the year, um, and it allows obviously more changes, etc. So there is that. That's one of my. That's one thing I'm seeing and I have seen over the past sort of six to six to nine months that have come out of it. So there's cost saving from a development side. Yep. What about customer experience side? Like, what's how is Hoover serving them? Yeah. So I can I can answer that as well. So speed is everything. Um, we're we're all you know we're all connected faster than ever um, to the internet nowadays, and demand is everything as well. So what's what's interesting is people try and cram their site and many you retailers, merchants will probably do this as well. And actually, what you actually find is that you've added, say, different third parties, different software vendors to the site. And you slowly, over time, your site will become heavier and thicker. With Hoover, you're reducing that straight away. You know, with, like, with what John was saying, it's, the site code is tiny. It's, it's minimal compared to what Luma theme is. So you're always one step ahead, um, I would say. Um, is, yeah. yeah. Would you add to that, John? Or? Oh, I think that, that covers that. that question, yeah. <laughs> um, if anybody in the audience is thinking yeah. about Hoover as an option moving forward, how how do they go about it? What can they expect? Because it's you know we've got a lot of um, it's been a tricky time this past year. Like development costs are something that I'm sure a lot of retailers are wanting to keep down. But so how do we move people onto Hoover from Magento, Adobe Commerce? What sort of length of time or costs? It varies. It, 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 it varies. <laughs> depends yeah. on how, how complicated your site is. We've um, we've got a couple of merchants who are stepping away from PWA Venue. They're going to come over to Hoover. Um, again, from a cost perspective, time time perspective, it, it, it's as long as a piece of string. But what we we are again, what we are finding, anything that will typically take a six month project, we're typically seeing this down to say a three month project. So. Anybody who's thinking about essentially future-proofing your Magento Adobe Commerce platform, now is the time, and, and Hoover is probably the technology to go, go for with that. Again, all, all boils down to um, cost, et cetera. Um, just to re sort of reiterate on speeds, et cetera, um, it's, what we're typically seeing is... We, there's some actual, some of the numbers that have come out and, and some of that's actually in some of the booklets that you've, we've got in the, in the other room. People have seen like a 10 times speed 
imp speed improvement performance across the site. Uh, that, that's massive. You know, something that was loaded and taking five seconds, which is typical luminosity, and we're seeing you know, sometimes down to less than two seconds, et cetera, on, a, on initial load. If you've got a good tech stack behind that as well, it really, really helps. You know, you've got something like Fastly behind it as well. Again, all these things can help build and make the customer experience that much better. Um, as you all know, a faster site will convert, you know, nine times out of ten over a, a very, very, very slow site. So, yeah, it's um, it's definitely it's definitely going to be moving forward with that. Um, you touched on a couple of integrations there with Fastly, and obviously we integrate. So, uh, Hoover integrates with Salesfire, and I think reviews IO, uh, IO, which are in the room. Is there any other integrations that it can or is limited by at the minute? Um, so it's because we are replacing the front end. There is there is some need for compatibility, but we're now we're now mature now. We've been around for three years. We've got a wide range of compatibility with most of the key extension vendors in the in the Magento ecosystem. So your Amnesty's, are Headworks, and all the like. Um, we've got a really good um, range of compatibility now. And even with the kind of the migration process that we that we touched on, um, it's moving to Hoover. If you're already on a standard Magento front end, it's not uh, it's not like a learning a completely new thing. Like as if you're moving to headless, the, there are changes, but generally they're going to speed your developers up rather than slow them down. You don't need to find uh, new new skilled people. Essentially, is what I'm saying. The, the, the teams that you've been working with over the years will continue to be able to deliver, um, but just faster. Clients, that, customers that are currently using Hoover, what do they look like? Who are they? Where are they? What are they selling? What sectors are they in? Do you have any? It's not really uh, specific to any sector. We're, we're seeing uh, adoption across the board from all sectors. So anyone that's that's on the Magento Adobe Commerce platform that's looking for a faster storefront, we, we're tending to be a good fit. Um, like I said at the outset, it's only, in, in our opinion, a handful, uh, you know, a, a small percentage of merchants that really need a headless solution. So we feel like we're, we're good fit for pretty much everybody else. And I guess one of the main questions is, like, what's coming up next? Like, Hoover, it's been around for a little while, but I know that there's a big community of developers that are adding to it all the time, and there's just been the UI components library that's just been released. So would you want to touch on what's in that library and what's coming up next? Sure, yeah. So we started out with a theme, which was a replacement for uh, the main storefront, excluding the checkout, um, which I'll come on to in a second. And then yeah, we've released, uh, there's a free addition to anyone with a, with a Hoover Themes license, um, uh, a UI library, which is just lots of drop-in components, so different headers, different footers, different menus, uh, lots of different things, galleries, all that kind of stuff. So that they're all available at no extra cost, and you can just drop them in. It really speeds things up, which is great. Uh, we've also uh, released our checkout earlier this year in early access. It should have a general release very soon. Uh, and again, that's a complete replacement for the whole checkout process, uh, kind of touching uh, on um, what Big Commerce mentioned earlier about like a, 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 a streamlined checkout. This is, this is, again, something that's reducing the cost and time of implementation of checkout. And I think from our stats, if I can recall correctly, I think it's 13 times more performant, faster speed than the, the default Magento checkout. So uh, yeah, there's lots going on there. Uh, and then next up, as I mentioned at the outset, the reason I've joined Hoover is to oversee our Adobe Commerce uh, uh, compatibility. So we're rolling out um, full compatibility with Adobe Commerce's B2B suite. So things like company accounts, quoting, um, requisition lists, purchase orders, quick order, which was contributed uh, by, by Fluid, um, along with uh, other areas. So there's the live search and product recommendations that Adobe has via their Sensei services. And then eventually we'll move on to lots of the other Adobe Commerce features, things like gift cards and reward points and returns. So all of that is coming uh, hopefully very soon. Um, so yeah, those are the things that we're, we're, we're working on. So it's going to be a real sort of pick what you fancy drag and drop it in. So does that mean that a retailer doesn't have to make the complete move from Loom or whatever they're on currently? They can just pick what they fancy from, from Hoover? Yes, yeah, so we've got the, the different products. So for the for the, the what we're calling Hoover Enterprise, the Adobe Commerce and B2B stuff, you would need the Hoover theme. But for the checkout, we're currently working on making that compatible with, with Luma. So you wouldn't need the main Hoover theme. You could just start with the checkout. Um, 
And also with the theme itself, um, you are able to just uh, implement it page by page if you want to roll it out more gradually rather than do a full re-theme all in one go. So if you either want to start with the product pages or, or something else and just test bits out and, and do it uh, in a slower fashion, you can. Um, I'm now going to throw it out to the audience. Um, any of our current Magento Adobe Commerce retailers, do you have any questions that you might want to ask our panelists? Or anybody who's not on a Magento or Adobe Commerce? <laughs> Is there anything you guys wanted to add in that I've forgotten to ask in my, my little cheap book of my clipboard? <laughs> No, I've not really got anything. I think it's more. I think it's more for retailers who are on Magento and Adobe Commerce, um, is to go away and actually do a little bit of ex explanation into the technology and do some good reading because there's. I think once you start delving into what's available and the potential costs of migrating, if you look at something from a three to sort of five year plan of what that cost is, and look at the overall potential conversion rate increases, the revenue increases, etc. It, it may it may well be worth the you know the getting the budget essentially and, yeah. and doing the spend for this. So it's um, that's one one takeaway I would I would take away with you. Basically. Okay. Thanks guys.